Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a single color ice dye with the color Dances with Raisins, and I usually will abbreviate this DWR. I have my shirt turned inside out, mostly out of habit. I've smoothed out as many wrinkles as I can, then I decide where I want the center of my spiral to be, and I'm going to make this shirt a center spiral. And using my microwave splatter guard and a hemostat, I'm going to create the spiral. So I give the center of the spiral a little pinch, put my microwave splatter guard down on there, and then I click my hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight. You do not want to tear a hole in the center of your spiral, and don't press it really hard into the table. I give the hemostat maybe two, three, four twists, and then with my opposite hand, I actually create the spiral. And I go as far as I can using the microwave splatter guard until I can't go any farther. I unclick the hemostat, I hold down the center of the spiral, and I gently wiggle the hemostat out. I like to secure my spirals by using rubber bands and these particular rubber bands are my favorite rubber bands in the color purple. I still use my regular favorite rubber bands but they're over in a pile next to the sink. I'm just being lazy about getting them organized. So once I get two or three rubber bands on the project then I like to tighten the spiral up because there's all these loose tails sticking out. So I will pull on the loose tails and tuck them into the nearest rubber band. And I go around and around, holding the spiral down so it doesn't want to roll up on me until when I pull on those loose tails, the spiral just doesn't really tighten anymore. Now you do want to be careful not to over tighten it because you can pull to a point where it will just want to taco in on itself and fold up. So just try to find a happy medium. Now, since this is going to be an ice dye, I will be creating an ice barrier using the silicone cake molds. So if you do have a little bit of tail sticking out, that's okay because the silicone cake molds can pick those up. And when I apply my silicone cake molds, I like to go with the direction of the spiral. That way uh, it doesn't bend back if there are the, like any little loose tags of fabric. It goes all in a nice spiral motion. So now it's time for the fun part and my favorite part. We get to add the dye. And like I mentioned, this is Dances with Raisins, abbreviated DWR. Many times when you're in the Facebook groups, you will see abbreviations and this is one of them. Another one that you will always see is NEG new emerald green we're not making that shirt today so i'm not going to go on and on about it but there are lots of abbreviations to learn and if you are in my group belladonna dyes community tie-dye group there are no silly questions if you're brand new to tie-dyeing please ask away because we are here to help you learn and you will find a link for the group down below in the description box it's down with all the social media links if you have not joined the group, I definitely recommend that you do. There are a lot of wonderful people in there. So if you're not familiar with what I'm doing, I'm doing a single color ice dye. And I love making these because you really get to see what ice dyeing can do with a color. So I want to leave white space on this project so that the dye has a chance to sort of bloom out into the white areas and show us what those splits are. So I'm just doing two pieces of the pie. You can do it any way you want. You can use any color you want, but this is what I'm doing right now. I got on autopilot and almost forgot my quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure and had I forgotten 
it could have been all right i think there have been projects where i have not remembered to use a soda ash the shirt is pre-soaked in soda ash so it should be okay but like i said i just like to add the little quick little sprinkle for the good measure now i love using my hexa cubes when i do these single color ice dyes because i can have control over the dye placement I really want to try to keep the dye in the dye area and the white in the white area. Sometimes when I use my nugget ice, I get it, it on there and I can knock the dye loose and into the white. And then I have like excessive amounts of just random dye in the white area. So if you don't have these ice cube trays, you can use any ice you want, but I do recommend it works for me anyways. If I fill up the white areas with the ice first, if the ice falls off, it falls into the dye instead of out of the dye and into the white. I hope that makes sense. Now, if you want to get these ice cube trays, I do have links down below in the description box for everything that I use for tie dye. So I recommend that you check that out. If you end up buying these ice cube trays, I recommend that you pull them out of the freezer like a minute or two before you're going to use them. It makes them a lot easier to take out of the little silicone trays. They just pop right out. Otherwise, you're wrestling with them and then your fingers get really cold. And I find that if I pop them all out and then stick them in my ice bowl, it's just a lot easier to deal with because a lot of times when you're putting the ice on the die, the die will crawl right up the ice cube then get on your gloves and then it gets into the ice cube tray and then you have to really clean the ice cube trays out because if you just go fill them back up then you're going to have dye particles in your trays so anyways that's my rant on the ice cube trays i love these i got the four pack and two trays makes one spiral um great and i just love it so i have two full ice trays on this shirt there are just a few pieces of ice that are left, and so what I'm doing is I'm focusing them on the die areas just to add a little extra ice to get more movement in the die. And then I'm going to set the project aside, and it's recommended that you let the project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours, and I let this project batch for the full 48 hours. So when I do these, a lot of times I get asked like, where did the dye come from on the back? Because if you look here, you can clearly see my two triangles of dye and then the white space. And then the back has all of this color. That's from the ice melting and the dye just going down and saturating into the pleats. This is still all one color. That's why I love making these, they're a lot of fun. But for the rinse out, you wanna start by using cold water. Cold water is going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear and really make sure you rinse your white areas out. Get that soda ash out of the shirt. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener and you will find the links down below in the description box. Then I'll put the project in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. And also keep in mind that I wash up to like eight projects at a time. So I'm not just doing one shirt at a time and being wasteful with the water. Well, here it is guys. Here's our single color ice dye in the color Dances with Raisins after it's been washed and dried. And this shirt turned out amazing. It is so beautiful. Dances with Raisins is a really fun color. It really leans in towards the purples, but still has the splits that are in the reds. As you can see here, it uh, has that rust color split still, but it also has some purples like some lavenders uh, some plums uh, the telltale reds with that rust orange but it looks really pretty like right here it's kind of glowing like like embers in a fire and the pattern looks great and the little rust orange stripes and the white look beautiful my white looks great um i am so excited to be moving 
out of the reds and down in through the pinks and getting into the purples and the blues and the greens because I think we're going to start seeing some really fun colors come out in the splits and I just like to dye with those colors. I've been pretty bored lately with making these single color ice dyes because reds don't have a lot to offer. They just don't do a lot when it comes to ice dyeing because you know it's it leans into the primary color. Um, the blues will be like that too, but we'll we'll worry about that when we get there. So overall, uh, Dances with Raisins is a really beautiful color, as you can see here. I think the shirt, like I said, turned out really great. I'm very happy with it. So if you're not familiar, I do have a playlist where I'm swatching out Dharma Trading Company's dyes. And I just started at the top of the list and I'm gonna work my way all the way through to the bottom. So it'll be a very valuable tool. Once it's complete, we can see how the dyes work in action. So I do recommend that you go check that out, especially if you are looking to see what a particular color is capable of. And then right here is the single color swatch Dances with Raisins liquid dye is what I'm trying to say. So you can see ice dye, liquid dye. It's a beautiful color. So what do you guys think of Dances with Raisins? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.